Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, August 21st, 2013. We begin with a story from the world of biotechnology. Scientists from the Scripps Research Institute have been able to insert unnatural amino acids into the genome of yeast. If you recall high school biology, for the most part, all the proteins used in life are made from just 20 amino acid building blocks. But for a while, scientists have been able to create proteins in the lab using amino acids not found in nature. Some of these new amino acids may have unique and useful chemical properties that could be applied to research or industry. The Scripps team had already added foreign amino acids to a bacterial genome, but adding it to eukaryotic yeast is a big deal. It's an important stepping stone to this level of modification in mammal cells and multicellular organisms. They were able to do this because the genetic code has redundancy. A sequence of three nucleotide bases called a codon corresponds to one of the 20 amino acids. That's 64 potential codons, meaning there are multiple codons that correspond to the same amino acid, and three stop codons that disengage protein synthesis in a ribosome. Molecules called transport RNAs are responsible for delivering amino acids to ribosomes. And these tRNA molecules are also associated with the codon and the correct amino acid. So the scientists selectively evolved a tRNA molecule and an enzyme that links the tRNA with the correct amino acid, and eventually produced an enzyme tRNA pair that delivered this unnatural amino acid. They created five strains of yeast with 21 amino acids. One contained an amino acid with a heavy metal ion useful in X-ray crystallography. Another contained a molecular hook that could easily bind to dyes used in imaging and more. With this capability, it will allow biotechnology to create and potentially mass-produce proteins literally not possible in nature, and this has huge implications for biology research, industry, and medicine. Next is an update from the world of medicine. A group of scientists led by the University of Oxford has discovered a new type of blood stem cell that could potentially save many lives. As you may know, stem cells in the bone marrow are responsible for replenishing the many blood cells in your body. This includes red blood cells, platelets, and the various white blood cell types. Scientists thought that there was one primary blood stem cell that gave rise to all the other cell types, but now this group has identified a second type. In the hierarchy of stem cell differentiation, this new stem cell is pretty much at the top being able to divide infinitely and even differentiate into several types of immune system cells in the blood. But its primary function seems to be in the formation of blood clotting platelets. This is extremely encouraging because many forms of cancer and often cancer treatments can greatly deplete platelets in the blood, leading to excessive bleeding. In experiments with mice that completely lacked bone marrow, one of these stem cells was able to return platelet levels to 10% of normal. So the next step is to isolate this new type of cells in humans and study its regulation, with the hope of either transplanting or stimulating the activity of platelet formation in patients recovering from cancer and other conditions. Our final story comes from the world of biology as it applies to botany. An international team of plant scientists have made a discovery that could drastically increase the potential of biofuels. As you know, we here at Brainstorm love biofuels, especially if they are from sources that don't take up agricultural land. One option for this type of biofuel is the conversion of cellulose and waste plant matter into sugars that are then fermented. Cellulose is a primary structural component in plant cells and a tough polymer to break down, but it can be done. Unfortunately, there is another obstacle to cellulose-based biofuel called lignin. Lignin is a tough protein that reinforces cellulose but is pretty much useless for most human applications. So lignin needs to be removed from plant matter in often volatile reactions that increase the cost and reduce the overall efficiency of biofuel production. However, this team has been studying how plants synthesize lignin and have identified a primary enzyme in its formation. In an experiment, they knocked out the gene for this enzyme, and lignin mass and stem material went down 39%. Even more incredibly, biofuel production from untreated cellulose went from 18% to 78%. This means an energy crop could be bred or genetically engineered to lack this enzyme, or have a modified form of it to make lignin removal much easier. 
This discovery will greatly increase the economic and energy potential of cellulose-based biofuels. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. To our audience, what do you think of the changes we've made, and how do you think we could improve further? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.